In this tutorial, you'll learn how to write a quadratic equation in vertex form. Let's get started with a warm up. If I told you that this red equation and this blue equation were the exact same equation, do you think you could prove it? Try using what you know about completing the square or double distributing to see if you can get these equations to match. Pause the video now. All right, there's actually two ways that you can prove these two equations are the same. You can manipulate the red equation to turn it into the blue equation, or you can do the reverse, manipulate the blue equation to turn it into the red equation. So let's take a look at how that happens. So the red equation, which already has a factorization in it, would require you to double distribute this square factor resulting in x squared plus 3x plus another 3x plus 9. The plus 2 and the equals 0 gets rewritten from the original equation. After you're done combining all the like terms, you'll get the blue equation, x squared plus 6x plus 11. Pretty neat. Now if you used the complete the square method, you would have started by initially moving the positive 11 to the right hand side of the equation by changing it to negative 11. Then in the empty space here, you would complete the square by taking half of b and squaring it. So half of 6 is 3, and 3 squared is 9. Now don't forget you have to add it to both sides of the equation. This is the most common mistake, forgetting to put the plus 9 on the right-hand side. When I combine these two terms, I get a negative 2. And then when I rewrite my trinomial as a perfect square factor, I get x plus 3 quantity squared. That's by taking the square root of the first term and taking the square root of the last term. I then take my negative 2, move it back to the left-hand side, and I get positive 2, which results in my original red equation. So these are some of the techniques that we've learned in our previous lessons. Factoring, foiling, um, or I call double distributing, uh, completing the square, and all of these tools help us to rearrange an equation so that it looks the way we want it to look. Now, sometimes you want it to look like the red sentence, and sometimes you want it to look like the blue sentence. So we're going to talk about those forms today. So let's begin. If you're following along in your notes, please write down this topic and the appropriate page number. By the end of the lesson today, you should be able to say, I can write an equation in vertex form and identify its vertex. You're going to need to know these three things today. Can you rewrite an equation by completing the square? Can you then identify the x and y coordinates from the numbers that are in that equation, which I'll teach you? And then third, write the coordinate in the correct format, right? x comma y. We'll talk about these two letters later, h and k, but this is an ordered pair x comma y. All right, let's begin. In our previous lesson, when we completed the square, it resulted in a quadratic equation being written in this particular way shown here, right? A completed square has a quantity, right? A factorization that is a repeat factor, x plus 3 and another x plus 3. So it looks like this. And what you're going to learn today is this has a special name. It's called the vertex form. That's because when it's written in this format, it can tell you the vertex just by looking at it. You don't even need to graph it. It's different from what we were seeing before, right? Typically, when I asked you to solve an equation, I gave it to you in this blue format. And that format has its own name. So let's take a look at some of the formats you know already. The first format we learned is standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. So standard form um, is useful when you want to know what the y-intercept of the equation is, right? I'm looking at this red equation, and I know that this constant here is my y-intercept. And that's about all I can tell just from looking at the equation. Now, it doesn't seem very useful if it only tells you one thing. But 
if you want to use this other way, this other method to solve an equation, which you're going to learn in a few days, called the quadratic formula, then the standard form is your friend. Because being in standard form is really helpful when you want to enter it into that crazy formula. But when we're talking about just inspection, right, that's the word we use when we say just using our eyeballs. When I'm just using my eyeballs and I look at this sentence, the only thing it can tell me is that if I was going to put it on a graph, that this parabola, which I know is facing up, right, because it has a positive A, I don't know where exactly it's going to be. I don't know where exactly it's going to be, but I do know that it will cross the y-axis at positive 8. I know that. Now, I'm not sure if it will have a vertex here, if it will have a vertex there, if it will have a vertex over here. I don't know any of that. But I do know it's going to cross the y-axis at positive 8. All right, so that's what the standard form is good for. Now, why did we learn about diamond patterns and the products of 8, but the sums of 6, and then we found that that was 4 and 2, right? So this red equation is the same as this blue equation, right? The factors are 2 and 4. So the red equation, written in standard form, is actually equal to the blue equation but it's written in a different form. And we learn these tools, right, factorization and diamond patterns, we learn these tools so that we can rearrange it to look like that. And when we rearrange it to be in what we call factored form, it tells me something very quickly just by using my eyeballs. I can tell by looking at this factored form that my parabola is gonna cross at negative four, and negative 2. I know that it has zeros or roots or solutions at these two points. All right, I remember that because when we solved these factors, we set each factor equal to 0. We did minus 4, minus 4, minus 2, minus 2, right? So I know that this parabola, oops, that was terrible. I know that this parabola is going to look like this. Or maybe it's going to look like this. Or maybe it's going to look like that. Not quite sure, but I do know that it's certainly going to have roots or zeros at negative 4 and negative 2, right? Just by using my eyeball, just by looking at these values, I can tell immediately. And then we have this one. It's actually called vertex form, but it could also be called completed square form, right? Because this is something we get when we do something called complete the square. And it's not going to tell me the y-intercept, and it's not going to tell me the zeros or the solutions or the x-intercepts or the roots, right? Those all, all those words mean the same thing. But if I use my eyeballs and I'm looking at this equation, I know that when I look at the parabola, it is going to have a vertex at negative 3, negative 1. And that's what we're going to work on today. So the main idea is that I can have the same equation written in three different ways, but they're all the same. Right? I'm going to take these three equations and I'm going to map them out on a graph for you. You ready? All right, let's see here if I can change the screen size. Oh, no, here we go. All right. So let's see, I've got x squared plus 6x plus 8, right? That was my original equation. And I see it here on red. And remember I said, oh, the only thing I can tell is it has a y-intercept of 8. And boom, there you go. Right? We were right. Now, I'm going to type the second form, the second equation, which was the factored form, x plus 4x plus 2. And look at that. There's our two factored forms. Same graph, right? Blue, blue equation, blue graph. It's the same exact line. And then the final equation, the vertex form, the green equation, again, the same roots or solutions. But look at this number here and look at that number there. We have a 3 and we have a minus 1. So look at that vertex, 3 and 1, 3 and 1. 
Now you might notice something a little different here with the x-coordinate. In the equation, it's positive, but on the graph, it's negative. And the y-coordinate, negative 1 here, negative 1 there. So that's something kind of important I want you to pay attention to. All right, so back to the main idea. Today, we're going to work on this. If I give you an equation in vertex form, can you tell me the vertex? And if I give it to you in standard form, can you manipulate it to look like this so that you can tell me the vertex? All right, let's get started. This is called the vertex form. Now, instead of using ax squared plus bx plus c, we're going to use different letters. So the h position is the x coordinate. The k position is the y coordinate. And here's the main idea. The x coordinate will always be the opposite of whatever you see in the equation. But the y coordinate will always be the same. That's it. That's all you need to know. If I give you an equation in vertex form, you simply look at the value in the h position, take the opposite of that number, and put it in the y coordinate b. Go to the k position and take that exact same number, and you're done. That's it. The vertex of this equation is positive 3, positive 7. Let's try another one. You think you know what to do? Take the number in the h position, change its sign. Take the number in the k position, keep it the same. That's the vertex. Pretty simple stuff. How about this one? You think you got it? That's it. Last one. Did you get it before me? Good job. I think you're ready to try these three on your own. All right, let's check your answers. How did you do? Okay, that was the easy part. <laughs> now let's get to the actual math. I'm gonna ask you to rewrite this equation in vertex form by completing the square. Then tell me the vertex. Now, you don't have to write that positive sign. I just want to make sure you know what's going on. Half of b is 2, squared is 4. Don't forget, add it to both sides. Take the square root of the first term. Take the square root of the last term. Steal the sign from the middle. There's your perfect square factor. All right, let's move that term back over so it's technically in vertex form. Vertex form has a zero on the side. Change the sign of the x-coordinate, leave the y-coordinate as is. What do you think? So now we're combining our old skill of completing the square with our new skill of identifying the vertex by looking at the equation. How about if it looked like this? If you don't like the 5 on the left hand side, you certainly could rewrite the problem if you want. You could do that, but I'm not going to 
because it's not necessary for me. But what is necessary is that all of the constants are together on the other side. So I need to add 4 to both sides. Does that make sense? All right, now we've got this empty space. Let's complete the square. Half of b is 4, and 4 squared, 16. Don't forget to add it to both sides. Take the square root of the first, take the square root of the last, steal the sign from the middle. Now don't forget to move your constant back over. The vertex is all right. I think you're ready to try these two on your own. Give it a go. Okay, let's check your answers. How did you do? Nice job. All right. One more task. Write y equals x squared plus 6x minus 5 in vertex form. Identify the vertex, the axis of symmetry, and the zeros. What? That's a lot of work, but we can do it. Remember, you can replace this y with a zero. Now, vertex form would look like this. Right? Half of b squared. Square root the first, square root the last, feel the sign from the middle. Move it back over. All right, now this can be solved to find the zeros, and this format can identify the vertex. Quite easily done. Now this other one, I would go back to this. I would take the square root of both sides. Now the square root of 14 is not perfect, so I'm going to leave it in that radical sign. And those are the two zeros. Now the last thing we haven't done in a while the axis of symmetry. Do you remember that formula? You might have to look it up. In the initial equation, you can find b. You cannot find b from vertex form. So b is 6, and a is 1. So the vertex is negative 6 divided by 2. And that makes sense because the axis of symmetry always goes through your x-coordinate of your vertex. You saw that? So I don't even have to do this math. If I'm smart, I know that the axis of symmetry is just equal to the x-coordinate. Now, I know the screen's a mess right now, but I think you might have seen what I did. It's tough, but give it a try. All right, let's see how you did.
Now for the solutions. That was tough. All right. I think you did a nice job today. That concludes our lesson on the vertex form.